Hello everyone, I'm Nitsa Owen, and today I'm bringing you another episode of Planeswalker Profiles here on Card Kingdom's YouTube channel. In the first two episodes, we looked at Nico Bolas and Gideon Jura, and today we're looking at the last major character and Planeswalker to appear at Mythic Rare and War of the Spark, and that's Liliana Vess, who had been roped into working for Nico Bolas as a master of his Eternal Army, but she of course eventually turned against him and played a huge role in defeating him. In this video, we're going to look at the various incarnations of Liliana over the years, talk about what these cards do, and the impact they've had on Magic's competitive history. Liliana has appeared on 10 Planeswalker cards. However, two of those were in Planeswalker decks, and those Planeswalkers are intentionally powered down, so there really isn't much discussion to be had about them, but we'll be looking at the other eight. Liliana has consistently been pretty powerful, with almost every version of her that we've seen finding its way into the top decks, sometimes even in multiple formats. For Liliana's first appearance, we have to go back further than one has to go for just about any other Planeswalker. This is because she debuted in the very first cycle of Planeswalkers in 2007 in Lorwyn, where Planeswalkers were printed in each of Magic's colors, Chandra for red, Jace for blue, Garak for green, Ajani for white, and Black for Liliana. All five of these are the Planeswalkers that have been in the game in the longest. This was back in a time before Mythic Rares exist, if you're wondering why this first version of Liliana, Liliana Vess, is only a rare. In her first appearance, Liliana could add to her loyalty and make an opponent discard a card, lose two loyalty to tutor a card to the top of your library, and she had an ultimate that reanimated all creatures in all graveyards. If left unchecked, Liliana's plus one and her ultimate synergize quite well together because you make your opponent lose their cards as her loyalty ticks up, and then if they're creatures, you can get them all back with that minus eight ability. All three of these things are abilities that are quintessentially black, and all three would be things that future versions of Liliana would sometimes do. Like all good Planeswalkers, she can generate some serious card advantage. The first version of Liliana proved to be powerful, with a dominant showing at Worlds in 2007, where she appeared in six of the top eight decks there. Liliana would be reprinted in Magic 2010, 2011, and 2015, and she would find herself in Grand Prix and Pro Tour top eights in all of those standard formats. Decks that played her included Fairy and Elf decks in Lorwyn Standard, blue-black control decks around 2011, and Abzan mid-range decks in Cons of Tarkir standard. Liliana's second appearance in Innistrad, four years after her first appearance in Lorwyn, is probably the most powerful and iconic of all Liliana Planeswalkers. Liliana only took three mana to cast, and she was well worth that amount of mana. Her plus one makes both players discard a card, her minus two makes your opponent lose a creature, and her ultimate makes a huge dent in your opponent's board, to say the least. Generally, if you could get her down on turn three and your opponent only had one creature in play, they were going to be in trouble because you could use her minus two immediately to get rid of that creature, thus there's no pressure on her, and then start ticking up her loyalty. Most decks that have played her over the years could usually get more of an advantage out of discarding cards in their opponents, so the symmetrical effect of both players discarding wasn't fully symmetrical. Liliana the Veil has found success in Standard, Modern, Legacy, and Vintage, with Modern being her most frequent home. In Standard and Modern, Liliana was the most popular in Jun decks. In Modern, one of the scariest things to face down was a turn 4 Bloodbraid Elf who cascaded into Liliana. This was one of the dream scenarios of the deck, and it happened pretty often. This interaction was a big part of why Bloodbraid Elf eventually got banned in Modern. Liliana is so strong, she frequently shows up in Eternal formats too. In Legacy, she sees play in decks like Shardless Bug, and in Vintage, she shows up in a variety of control decks. Liliana the Veil vale is a multi-format all-star, and so far, the best Liliana ever, and one of the best Planeswalkers of any kind. On my channel, I did an MTG Top 10 on the best Planeswalkers based on their successes at highest levels of competitive play, and Liliana of the Veil vale clocks in at number 4, showing that she deserves to be in the conversation as one of the best Planeswalkers we've ever seen. Liliana's next appearance came in Magic 2013, where she appeared as Liliana of the Dark Realms, and she was also reprinted in Magic 2014. This Liliana really loves swamps. Her plus one lets you search your library for a swamp as she ticks up her loyalty, meaning you never have to worry about missing a land drop again as long as you have her in play. Her minus three lets you either pump or weaken creatures an amount equal to the number of swamps you control, and her ultimate makes your swamps produce stupid amounts of mana. Liliana of the Dark Realms has no Pro Tour or Grand Prix Top 8s to show for her efforts. However, I think she really makes up for that because she is a staple in any mono black EDH deck. She is featured in almost 10,000 EDH decks on EDH Rec, owing largely to the fact that her abilities are the kind that play really well there. There aren't very many cards that pay you off more for playing mono black and as many swamps as possible. 
games also generally go longer in EDH, and her ability to generate tons of mana and kill things and even find you lands all play a lot better there. So while she may have been too slow for formats like Standard or Modern, she is a complete powerhouse in EDH. Liliana next appeared in Magic Origins, where she appeared in the cycle of Flipwalkers. This cycle lets us see some of our favorite Planeswalkers before their sparks ignited, and Liliana was apparently a heretical healer on Dominaria. In other words, she broke rules to come up with a cure for her sick brother, but her cure drove him insane and murdered people, and she turned those people into zombies to fight him, and that's when her spark ignited. And now, she's a necromancer. On her creature side, Liliana is a 3-mana 2-3 with lifelink, and that's not great. But anytime another creature dies, she transforms into the Liliana Defiant Necromancer side, and immediately puts a 2-2 zombie onto the battlefield when she does. This was actually the first time Liliana was given a zombie-related ability, something that all subsequent Lilianas would do. This zombie's nice because it means your Planeswalker Liliana comes down with some immediate protection thanks to the zombie. Like most versions of Liliana, this one makes people discard cards, she can also reanimate creatures from your graveyard, and she has an ultimate that gives you a super powerful emblem that makes it so that any time a creature dies, you get it at the end step, and it doesn't matter whose creature it is. This Liliana saw a bit of success at the Pro Tour, appearing in a black-green Aristocrats deck at Pro Tour Magic Origins. This deck was built around a lot of sacrificing of creatures, so the deck had no problem finding a way to transform Liliana into her powerful Planeswalker form. In Liliana's next appearance, she was once again a 3-mana Planeswalker, Liliana the Last Hope, which was printed in Eldritch Moon. This Liliana can kill small creatures and weaken large ones while ticking up her loyalty. She can also mill you some and return a creature card to your hand from your graveyard, effectively being a draw a card effect, and she has an ultimate that creates a never-ending zombie army. This Liliana was well positioned for a standard format where Delirium was one of the dominant decks. She could help you quickly hit Delirium while drawing you cards and killing creatures, all for the efficient cost of only 3 mana. Like her 3 mana predecessor, Liliana of the Last Hope also sees a lot of play in Modern and Legacy. So far, Liliana has been the biggest beneficiary of the change to the Planeswalker rule in 2017. Originally, you could not have more than one Planeswalker in play with the same Planeswalker subtype. In other words, you couldn't have both Liliana of the Veil and Liliana the Last Hope in play at the same time. But this was changed in 2017, so that Planeswalkers were now all legendary. So the rule now is just that you can't have two with the exact same name in play. But now, two Lilianas, like Liliana of the Veil and Liliana Last Hope, can coexist. And this was good news for Jun players in Modern, who can now play both of these powerful three-mana powerhouses. She also sees play in other Modern decks that can really take advantage of her mill ability, like Death's Shadow. In Legacy, she is almost exclusively played in blue-black Death Shadow decks, which, like their modern variant, like loading up their graveyard to fuel their deck. Like Liliana of the Veil, Liliana of the Last Hope appeared on my MTG Top 10 on the Best Planeswalkers, clocking in at number 6, a pretty impressive feat for a relatively recent Planeswalker. Liliana next appeared in Amonkhet as Liliana Death's Majesty. She came with a plus one that makes a zombie token and mills your library, a minus three that reanimates a creature as a zombie, and an ultimate that demolishes anything that isn't a zombie. Obviously, this all worked quite well with her because she makes zombies. This Liliana can provide protection for herself with that zombie or the reanimation ability and completely reshape the game with that ultimate. That's a great combination of abilities. Liliana Death's Majesty saw some modest play in Standard, appearing in Demir mid-range decks where she could serve as a powerful win condition. We next saw Liliana in Corset 2019 as Liliana Untouched by Death. While the previous two Lilianas certainly liked zombies, this Liliana loves them, as all three of her abilities involve zombies. Her plus one lets you mill yourself, and if you happen to mill a zombie, you get to drain two life from your opponent. Her minus two gives minus x minus x equal to the number of zombies you control. And her minus three lets you just start casting zombies from your graveyard. And obviously, that goes pretty nicely with her plus one, since presumably your graveyard is going to be pretty nicely stocked by the time you use it. Pretty much every Liliana we've talked about has been an excellent card in draft and sealed. This Liliana? Not so much. She was pushed really hard to have zombie synergy, but in a set without enough zombies. So Liliana is one of those strange planeswalkers that actually isn't very good in limited, which is a rare thing, at least before War of the Spark it was. Her all-in zombies plan has also made it hard for her to find a home in constructed formats. She was too late in standard to be part of the zombie decks that were powerful when both Shadows over Innistrad and Amonkhet were in standard, and there hasn't been a powerful zombie deck in any other format since then. You can bet, though, that should zombies ever find a way into non-rotating formats, she'll probably go along for the ride. 
While this all in nature has been a problem for formats that are played at Grand Prix and Mythic Championships, it does make her particularly attractive to anyone interested in playing a tribal zombie deck on kitchen tables or in EDH. And all of that brings us to Liliana's most recent appearance in War of the Spark as Liliana Dreadhorde General. This version of Liliana is the leader of the Eternals on Ravnica and working for Bolas, though as we mentioned earlier, she does turn on him. This Liliana costs a whopping 6 mana, but boy, she carries her weight. Like all War of the Spark Planeswalkers, she comes with a static ability. Hers draws you a card every time one of your creatures dies, which is quite powerful. This is because it means that your creatures will always replace themselves. Her plus one, of course, makes you a zombie token, which nicely combos with her static ability to mean that at the very least you can chump lock and draw a card with her on most turns. Her minus four makes both players sacrifice two creatures, which is an exchange you'll always come out ahead in because, again, you draw cards for each of your creatures who die, even those that you sacrifice to her ability. Then she has an ultimate that ends the game for your opponent by destroying most of their permanents. So far, and it's very early on in War of the Spark standard, this Liliana hasn't proven herself on the biggest stage, Grand Prix and Mythic Championships, but it is hard to imagine that she won't find herself into a Tier 1 control deck at some point while she's in standard. In the meantime, she'll just have to settle for being one of the absolute biggest bombs in War of the Spark Limited, since most of the time she comes down, she just ends the game for your opponent between adding zombies to the board, drawing you cards, and removing creatures. Well, that does it for Liliana's Planeswalker profile. Thanks to Gideon, we know we will be seeing her on other Planeswalker cards in the future. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure to catch future episodes of Planeswalker Profile, don't forget to subscribe here to the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.